you start by telling us um, how old you were when you um, became unemployed and what happened? Right, I was 17 and the reason I ended up with a disability is because I had a, a bad motorbike accident and I became unemployed because I used to work in the sawmills and there was no job actually for a one-armed person in the sawmills, <laughs> obviously because of insurance reasons. Yeah. Um, it was quite a bad motorbike accident, quite a serious one. I was out of work for nearly five years, but in that five years, obviously I was still in the hospital for about two of them. Then I started looking for work in about 1982. Um, just wondering what the hell to do, who would take me on. Um, actually, even walking came to the stage where I used to walk into factories and ask if I could you know, give me a chance to come and work for them for a day just to prove that I could you know, do the work they wanted me to do. And actually I had that, you know, I had a couple of people who did do that. But nothing, nothing came of it. Nothing came of it at all. What brought you to your first break? I mean, it must have been terribly traumatic for you. Um, so you were going around, knocking on everyone's door. Um, when did a break? Well, back in those days, it, we used to go to the job centre, and I think it used to be under a disablement settlement officer. And what they kept on to me about was to go. I think it was St Lloyd's College in Exeter to do some training, which was all well and good, but at that time I'd moved out of home, I had my own flat, so I needed to earn a good wage, obviously, to pay the rent and everything like that. And that's what made me go, and it was in George Street in Exeter, and um, there was a workshop there for the disabled. And I, I think their name was Devon Industrial Services back then, and this was in 1985. And you, I don't know, a silly thing actually, well it wasn't silly, it paid off. There used to be a programme on the TV called Boys From My Black Stuff. And on this programme was a guy called Joshua Hughes. And he used to walk around to everybody when he was out of work saying, give us a job, give us a job. And I knew someone that worked in this disabled place and I decided one day just walking in and knocking on the manager's door. Walked into his office and he asked me to sit down and what he could do to me. And I just said, give us a job. And we just started talking and that was when I got my first job after my accident. He took me on after a couple of weeks of arguing with the um, um, job centre exactly, because they said it wasn't the place for me to go. But all, like I said earlier, all I was interested in was earning a wage to keep myself going and to prove, you know, I've been out of work for quite a few years. I just needed to do something. And that, that's how it all took off. Um, so tell us what you're doing now. Did you, um, did you work your way up? Yeah, I mean, I remember the first job I'd done in there. Um, actually, the manager back then, when we were talking, he said, well, what do you think you could do? I said, well, I'll go at anything. And um, when I, I remember the first day, and they used to put the seat canvases and back canvases into polythene bags and pack into bundles of 50. So that was my first job. I used to put the canvases in the bag. We found ways of getting around and everything. And while I was doing that, I was looking around the, the factory thinking, well, I could have a go at that. They used to have a laying up table with a cutting knife. So I said to the um, supervisor one day, I said, any chance I could have a go at that? And then obviously, then he looked at me and said, well, I don't know where we'd stand on insurance on that. And I said, well, I've got to be one of the safest ones to use a cutting knife because my arm's completely paralyzed. I can't get my other hand on the table. There was clamps and back in those days, the weight of the material, nothing used to move and that. And there was always two people on there anyway. So I had a go at that and, and just went on to different jobs. And you know, that's how it all started. And just worked my way up from there. And then we moved to a bigger factory in Marsh Barren. And that's when things really started to take off. And you know, the production started to increase. There was more and more. I was doing more and more jobs, different things. And then we got, I got made up. Back in the day, they used to call it a charge van which was below a supervisor, but you know, you, you were your supervisor's right-hand man. Well, me and more in one way, like, but you know what I mean. And um, that was it, and I think two years after that, I got made up to a supervisor. And I've been in this factory ever since, 33, 32, 33 years. Fantastic. 
So if there was one piece of advice which you would give to someone in your position um, back then, what would it be? Never give up. Never give up. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, that I was 17 at the time of my accident, and the first couple of years were quite hard. And because I suffered quite a bad head injury as well, so I mean, I didn't get much help. And you know, even to this day, I cannot remember how the accident happened because uh, I just lost all that. Uh, so you, you, you find lots of problems um, getting dressed, stuff like that. But there's a way around everything, and you know, people watch me say peel a spud, and they think, "Well, I never thought about doing it like that." So sometimes you don't need two hands to do everything, and it's not just a, a one-armed disability. There's, there's all sorts of disabilities out there, and and there's ways around everything. But I think the most important thing is I didn't give up. I just wanted to prove to people that I could be just as good as them, and that's that was it really. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dave, for your time today. Okay.